Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I've got another tuning guide for you. Actually, uh, a subscriber's request, so shout out to Bart Lecoq, I believe I've uh, pronounced your name correctly. Uh, Bart asked for um, a cart which I really don't use um, pretty much ever actually, but it made for an interesting challenge. So he wanted a Lotus Elise 99. We're all very familiar with that being quite an OP car in B class, A class and S class. But with a bit of a twist, he said he's been trying to tune the car uh, to drive it without traction control and he's had a lot of difficulty. So I thought, well, that would be an interesting enough challenge. So why not give it a go? And turns out it is incredibly difficult. And I found it was more so with the build rather than the actual tune setup itself. It seems that if you get the build right, then the thing can become a lot more drivable. And um, considering that I put a bit of time into it to help out, but I thought why not share the video out in case any of you guys would like to give the car a go. Um, so Bart requested that we have it in S class. So I have built it up to S800 spec. Uh, we're just waiting for the game to load here. As you can see on the leaderboard, we've actually got uh, nearly a top 30 time in Europe. And then for the world, we are just outside of the top 50. So I managed to get a 1 minute 12.1. Uh, Bart said he was hoping to have a car which can do sub 13. So <laughs> we've definitely done the job there. But um, I know that if we bother putting in actually some proper laps, um, this can definitely get into the 111s. And I think to do that without TCS, would make it a very quick car and um, because as you can see the 111s are pretty much top 30 material for the whole uh, leaderboard there so um, even if you go over to the leaderboard for no assists and hardcore you can see all we're up against is just other lotuses and then the Donkavort. so it's in good company uh, a pretty nice car uh, with that said we'll tuck over to the actual build and tune side of it quickly walk through how the car is built and you might also be wondering, what is that noise in the background? That sounds like something a bit old. Yeah, of course, it is the Forza 6 um, soundtrack. So hopefully it's not too loud for you guys. Hope it's come through well. But uh, if you appreciate um, some music from the older Forza games, please slap that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. So without further ado, let's get into the build. Uh, first up, engine swap. We bumped it up to the 3.7 liter V6 engine. Uh, no conversion for the drivetrain and we booped it up to the twin turbo so very popular choice when it comes to making an XL car but I've actually tried to make it part XL part grip so we've kept the stock intake stock fuel system stock ignition the exhaust is actually sport stock camshaft stock valves stock engine block stock pistons stock oh it was funny enough you say stock but it's technically a street twin turbo so we have a twin turbo anyway we've kept the intercooler stock and we've kept the oil and cooling stock flywheel we have not touched it over to the brakes they are race then we have race springs oh game's a little bit froze there there we go race spring and dampers race front anti-roll bars and race rear anti-roll bars and then full race rate reduction stock clutch street transmission don't really need the race one as you can see it's a hefty amount of pi uh, don't need to um, actually adjust the gears much um, so yeah pretty good sport drive line and the race differential onto the tires this is where it gets interesting so i decided to go with race tire compound and then it was the front tyre with where I was really having issues. So I initially went for a build and it was maximum grip. So it had maximum front tyre width. Turns out though that especially at a place like Catalonia where you've got a lot of elevation changes and camber on turns as well. I was finding that the car would simply rotate too much on corner entry and at the mid part of the corner. So it just made the car too sketchy and it wasn't the type of thing I could tune out. What I found was that actually bumping it down, giving the front a little less grip, actually made the car a lot more consistent through turns. So um, that's something you'll be able to see in uh, the, my replay on the leaderboard as well. 
Uh, we got upgraded rear tire width. So as you can see, we went up to 6.4 handling. There are some builds like from THR Lightning, which are actually around 6.3. I think Lee Campbell, he's got one at 6.3 or 6.4 as well. And that's like a ridiculous build. Um, it's super strong around tracks like Nürburgring GP. Um, but this one I think is a great alternative. It's one that's a bit more handling orientated. So you can take it around tracks where um, there's some more longer turns because this is typically the type of car that would die um, or suffer a lot when trying to deal with longer uh, radius turns um, but I think this one handles really nicely and then onto the rim style uh, you just go a few down and it's the RG2 and as you can see right there that gets us in uh, have not upgraded the rim um, size I did try it and there was no benefit to it same goes for the rear rim and then last but not least race front bumper and race rear wing. Let's now tuck into the tune. So tire pressure 27, 27. Gearing is stock. Onto the alignment. So the front is minus 1.2. Then the rear is minus one. Onto the toe, zero, zero for the front. Rear toe though, um, minus 0 0.2. Quite interesting, but as I mentioned, this car has so much acceleration. And if you're not using TCS, it can definitely be a bit difficult um, to keep the car in a straight line as you're exiting turns. So that's why we've gone with that. Front caster, we have gone with 7.0. Onto the anti-roll bars. As you can see, we've tried to set it up for a bit of understeer, but not too much. So we've kept the front anti-roll bar slap bang in the middle at 20.07. Then the rear we have brought all the way down to 12.1. This particularly helps on corner exit and as well as corner entry to some degree, but it's corner exit where this makes the car just a bit more stable. But either way, you need to be really patient on the throttle. Springs are set up for understeer and this is really to help throughout all the parts of the corner um, as well as just straight line grip as well. So the car can actually put all of that horsepower down because it's a lot of horsepower for a very light car. So front 481, rear 319, and then ride height, we have just put it all the way down to the bottom. Onto rebound and damping, front is 12.5, the rear is 12.0, bump stiffness 2.4, the rear 2.5. So kind of standard, you know, kind of typical numbers you'd see on my channel. Um, but yeah, didn't have to play around much. 0.4 just to help a tiny bit um, on corner entry get the car rotating enough but then um, here we actually try and stabilize the car on corner exit downforce is just maximum on front and rear break in 49% you'd typically see me go um, a lot more to the rear but this car rotates so much uh, while slowing down anyway that um, we only went for 49 and then braking pressure I've put as 160 but honestly guys you can do this to your personal preference and then last but not least the differential you'd be thinking what the hell is this guy doing has he never tuned in his life before but I'm telling you this car without TCS it is definitely a challenge to uh, keep running together so truth of the matter is I just found that bringing the acceleration diff all the way down to 50% really helped on corner exit Whereas bumping the deceleration up to 50% really helped on corner entry. I'm telling you, I've never done this on a car. I've never put a decel diff so high. But for this car, it just seems to work. Um, so you tell me in the comments if you've done it on any cars before. Because for me, this feels like I had to go against the rule book um, of things I've learned over the years. But um, it's, it just worked on this car. So... Um, that is that that is the tuning guide I, I hope it's helpful to you guys uh, as I said please do watch um, the replay if you want to kind of study like how to drive the car especially um, with being patient on the throttle like I mentioned you really do have to um, take it slow when uh, putting the throttle down otherwise the car will still just get out happy and spin out and um, but as always guys, if you enjoyed the content, please make sure you've liked the video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. I know that most of the people who watch my videos are people who are not subscribed. So please make the most of it. Get on board because there's always going to be more tuning guides. And of course, every week doing open lobbies, which I host with my friend LZR Rossi. So if you want to get in some casual but fast racing, please do that guys. But as always, 
thank you very much for watching and take care. I look forward to seeing you in the comments.